Hey everyone, welcome back. It's my K Swedish Whiskey Girl, and today we're here with another Puni whiskey. So, of course, an Italian single malt from the distillery Puni, which is located uh, kind of in the Italian Alps. It is a whiskey that has been matured for about five years in Marsala casks, and Marsala is a fortified wine from Sicily, and it can be dry or it can be sweet. I'm not sure entirely what this what the marsala wine used for the for oh, can't speak for these kind of casks would have been but i'm very intrigued to try it this is natural color non-chill filtered and bottled at 43 percent and of course i have previously tried the puni alba and the puni gold and eventually i'll do a comparison video as well but so far they've been very intriguing and i mean you know how much i love a kind of little bit different and international whiskey. So we're gonna start by having a look on the nose. Hmm, the first thing I'm getting is kind of tropical reasons. I don't know if that by default makes it like dates or what's it called? Sultanas? Um, but yeah, it's like uh, almost like a pineapple meets raspberry uh, raisin. <laughs> I really can't speak today. I think uh, I'm a bit fueled by no spray today, so maybe I've taken a, a tad too much no spray. Uh, I'm a little bit allergic this time of year, so <laughs> yeah, might be that. A very pleasant nose, quite fruity. Fruity and fresh. I love the Christmassy, so like Christmas spices. And a bit of the woodiness there as well. I'll just warm it up a little bit because I'm struggling to get a lot of the aromas, they're very kind of gentle, so I'm just curious if it's the temperature perhaps, because it, it's starting to get cold this time of year now. It's almost like the aromas has like the same kind of texture as grapes, because it's quite juicy and quite fresh and crisp. Oh yeah, quite a tropical nose. Almost like a, a black tea, like a herbal black tea as well. Hmm, well let's have a taste. Chin chin. Very velvety. It's um... On the palate, I would say there's more of the oak coming out and it's quite um, almost like a vegetal bitter oak but it's also mixing up with fruit flavours and yeah, some Christmas spices but they all feel very velvety. I think the reason's coming out more in the nose. It's not as sweet as I was anticipating. It's a little bit more woody, I would say. And it's, um, it has like a bitterness, like I said, and it feels like it belongs to the, the oak, but I think it's more of a bitterness that I would recognize, like sometimes if you've been eating grapes and you just chew on the peel, you get the tannins, and it's that kind of bitterness that comes out. So it's vegetal, I don't know, when I say vegetal, there's so many different types of vegetal notes. So you can get a, an herbal vegetal note, or, but this is more that kind of grape, tanniny bitter note, which feels quite green and quite vegetal. Yeah, not that sweet, but it does have a sweetness to it. Hmm, 
it's the, the woodiness and the spices that come out the most, but I would say it's more the flavour of the spices, it's not a spicy feeling. Hmm, I mean it's an interesting one. It definitely raisins on the nose, but I, I can't seem to find a raisin note on the palate. It almost reminds me a little bit of a, like a bitter aperitif. So something like, um, I had a Negroni the other day. I know there's Campari in it, and Campari is quite bitter. So it's almost like this would also work as just like, if you just want something bitter. It's, and I know a lot of people might think the bitter is something negative, but it's not an unpleasant bitterness. Yeah, it's, it feels quite like an aperitif in a way. But I think if I tried this next to a bitter aperitif, I think they would be quite far away in levels of bitterness, but because the kind of grape peel, woody bitterness is what comes out as the kind of the dominant flavour, it's um, what I identify most with, if that makes sense. And then in the edges, it's kind of like this kind of hard, um, what's it called, centre. And then on the edges it kind of softens out, and then you have a little bit more fruitiness there. It's almost like an orange, maybe orange peel fruitiness. Hmm. I think it's going to be so fascinating to try this next to the gold and the alba. Uh, in a few days perhaps and see yeah how they compare to each other. This is of course my first drama of the day and I do tend to try and film to about one to three so I don't overwhelm my palette but to try and be a little bit productive and I think that can of course affect how you perceive them so it is going to be very interesting to try these next to each other. I'm probably going to go gold, vena and then Alba because Alba is a little bit of peat to it because it's ex peated casks from Isla and the gold is of course ex bourbon. Hmm. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried any of the Puni whiskies? Have you tried this Puni Dina? Have you tried any of their other expressions? I mean, I just love keeping an eye on these international distilleries and I will definitely follow them along in the future. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I'd be absolutely over the moon if you considered using my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All the information is, of course, in the section here below, as well as links to my Patreon, my Teespring shop, my Instagram, and my website if you're curious about that. As always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for wanting to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slendjava, Scotland.